Time now for the starting goalies presented by Honda. All the injuries for the Buffalo Sabres, including their two goaltenders, Enrob the Neuberth. So Nathan Lewin, 22 years of age. There you see his numbers. His fifth career National Hockey League start just the seventh time he has appeared in the game of the National Hockey League. And Steve Mason gets the call here tonight after it was Ray Emery yesterday afternoon in that loss in Boston. Mason with 31 victories and four shutouts on the season. He has resurrected his career here in Philadelphia. The Flyers come in, as we mentioned, in the middle of a playoff race in the Metropolitan Division and the Eastern Conference. will keep you up to date on what's going on in the other important games. Columbus is now leading the Islanders 4 to nothing as they come into action two points behind these Flyers. The Flyers do own the tiebreaker. We are underway. Right in front of the Philadelphia bench, it is dumped along the boards behind Mason. He settles it down there, Timo Timonen. We missed one game for the Flyers earlier in the week against St. Louis, a game we had here on NBCSN, but he is back and a save made there by Leo and off the first rush for the Flyers into the Buffalo zone. And back the other way, Ennis. Hands it off now, and a couple of players spun around. I don't know if he stepped on the puck. That was Jake McCabe, the defenseman. Just signed an entry-level contract out of the University of Wisconsin. Boy, the Philadelphia Flyers showed that they are going to be aggressive offensively. That first rush, Braden Coburn was one of the first guys up the ice, the big defenseman for the Flyers. Look for them to do that. Five guys activate, five Philadelphia Flyers will down, be down by the tops of the circles in Buffalo's end a lot tonight. The Tourier knocks it away in the neutral zone. Christian Erhoff back to get it. Look out, he put it right up into the Buffalo bench and out of play. Well, as soon as the Flyers got possession of the puck, they attacked down the right wing. Now watch it. Look at the left side of your screen. Look at Braden Coburn, the big guy. I mean, is he pulling back? Is he looking to join the rush late? No. He was driving the defense back and going right all the way to the back of the net. That sets the tone for the Flyers' D-man right there. The Tourier, who you talked to moments ago, Brian out here centering this line with Ronaldo and Reed. As D'Agostini for the Sabres lifts it out through center ice. Like the way before it could be picked up there by Cody Hudson and now recovered by Ristolainen back in the Buffalo zone. Ted Nolan very high on the number 55, Rasmus Ristolainen. One of the young prospects in this Buffalo organization as uh, Mason drops the puck off. Buffalo making wholesale changes as the Flyers back the other way. Reed given a hard bump by Delorier. Young winger picked up from the LA Kings before the trade deadline. For his first National Hockey League goal at the Joe Louis Arena the other night. A big hit by yeah. Delorier on Braden Shen. Yeah, that was right on right on time. They're right on cue, did. Delorier hit hard. A couple of years in the American League. He wants to find his way into the NHL. Pick him up in the LA organization. Played his American Hockey League uh, action in Manchester. As part of the LA Kings organization. It comes down to Flynn inside the Flyers zone. Dumps it along the boards behind Mason. He ended up on the near side. McBain had moved in, number four, the defenseman. He had the other goal in the loss against Detroit the other night, a game in which the Sabres trailed 3-0 in the first period. Considering their situation, they could have packed it in, but yeah. they continued to battle, Brian. And they had uh, Detroit fans with some anxious moments late in the game after Buffalo had pulled their goaltender for the extra attacker. Well, Teddy Nolan's just been after this team. So, look, I just want you guys to compete. That's what I'm watching. Yeah, we'll give you some X's and O's, but I want to watch the compete level for you guys. A redirect by Hall that uh, was pretty harmless and handled there by Lewin. Teddy Nolan's done a good job with this group. It's hard to motivate a team that's been buried for a couple of months or so, traded off a lot of star players, and are basically reworking the whole system. they got new faces in the lineup all the time. They almost have to introduce each other a little bit, so there are going to be breakdowns, and it's like an audition every game yeah. from here on to the end of the season. No longer the interim coach given the uh, three-year contract. Now Conacher, one of the new faces, lifts it back into the flyer zone. Shipped ahead by Borchek. He's going to play it himself. Skates it all the way into the Buffalo zone. Tries to take it wide on Rue Weedle. Centering pass, but shot in tight. Good stop there by Lewin. Well, Jake Borchek's obviously pumped up to get something going here. Playing on the right wing with uh, Claude Giroux, but he just comes back in the zone and takes it all by himself. 
Gets by a couple of Sabres. Sabres don't push him to the outside. There's too much gap in between the Sabres players, so Voracek is able to just pick his way all the way up the ice, get it to the front of the net. That's well done by the Flyer right winger. Hodgson wins the draw. Bristol line and hands it off. Earhart took a hit from Ronaldo. And now the Flyers regain at center ice. Buffalo's going to have to be good along the wall. You see how Luke Shen pinched in along the wall there very quickly at support in the middle by Giroux. Now Ronaldo, along with Matt Reed. Ronaldo throws Erhoff down. The forecheck continues here for the Flyers. Erhoff gets back up and battles with Ronaldo as the puck comes free. D'Agostini got a stick on it. Then the stick is slashed right out of the hands of the Flyer player, Ronaldo. And uh, Christian Erhoff, who was in that battle, with number 36 of the Flyers for pretty much that whole shift, Brian, he's going to the box for slashing. Y you know what he's upset about, too, is the last faceoff inside the Buffalo zone. He had his st stick chopped in half exactly like that, and there wasn't any call in the play, so he's angry. That's one of the things he's yelling at the referees, uh, among others, I'm sure. So the Philadelphia Flyers go to the power play. Ted Nolan's club shorthanded for the first time in this game. Flyers ranked 10th in the National Hockey League over the course of the season. A shot here right through, deflected up high over top of the Buffalo net. Lynn tries to clear, held in by Voracek, slides it across for Giroux. Top of the circle, middle of the box, Hartnell jams it across to Voracek, now back for teaming it. Voracek one-timer, kind of misfired. Did he break the stick? Yes, yes. he did, and he throws both pieces rather dangerously in disgust. Yeah. One of the officials had to get out of the way. I'll say. And uh, the Buffalo bench was yelling. They wanted him to have a penalty. That was uh... as this Daru shot is handled by Lewin. Uh, if you're watching the NBC game earlier today between St. Louis and Chicago, critical stage of the game with the goaltender cold and Alex Petrangelo had a chance for a potential tying goal, and his stick just shattered in half. We see it happen so often in today's National Hockey League. Voracek went back to the referee Rob Martell and apologized yeah. to him because yeah, he slung it in the air and almost took Martell's head off. Jurgensen wins the draw, then battles on the wall for the puck, able to get a free Rue Weedle, able to clear it for the Buffalo Sabres. They scored last game. They'd been in a bit of a drought prior to that. They really thrive off their power play. Sometimes I think they do put too much pressure on it. Giroux for Hartnell. Tried to jam it back, blocked by Gergensen. And good hustle by the Sabres. Gets it out to center ice. Now short-handed. Gergensen's across the line with a shot force. Mason to make the save. Ten regulars out of the lineup for Buffalo. Chris Stewart, Alexander Seltzer, Tory Mitchell, Drew Stafford, Henrik Kalinder, Marcus Colino, Zenon Kanaka, Tyler Myers. I'll take a breath here for a second before I mention the two goaltenders. That are also out of the lineup, and that would be Jonas Enroth and Michael Neuberth, and those are the list of players that would all be in the lineup if they were healthy. They don't expect either goaltender back. The good news is they think Stewart's going to be back real soon. They thought he was done for the year. Same thing with Felino. Felino could be back as early as next game. Now pushed ahead with speed, and on the far side, it is going to be called offside. We talked to Sean Couturier during the pregame. If you look at the Buffalo Sabres, 44 different players have played one game this year. That is a franchise record. And the Philadelphia Flyers are on the opposite side of that. They've used the least players. There's a look at Sean Couturier, who's one of the best matchup centers, meaning he gets the assignment against the top center on the other team night after night. He said he's not going to change his game. I mean, Buffalo doesn't have a guy anywhere near the top 20 or 25 in scoring, and they're a non-playoff team. We'll see if Couturier maybe tries to get his offense going because he's really had trouble scoring goals, and they need production from everybody, as does every team. He's basically third-line center, gets a lot of ice time. Jim Duran on the near side. Weber there for the Sabres, able to clear. And backhanded by Erhoff into the flyer zone. Mason comes out, decides to handle the puck. One thing Couturier has changed is that facial hair. He trimmed up that yeah, he did. Jack Beard a little bit, didn't he? Should be faster. Andrew McDonald plays it ahead. Knocked down in the neutral zone. That was McCabe that jumped up, trying to get a stick free. Now Hartnell able to jam it across to the Flyers. Back the other way. The Cavalier across the line and just offside on the play. 
Just over six minutes gone by here in the first Flyers with a 6-2 lead and shots on goal, but it is scoreless here at Wells Fargo. Vidal <laughs> Cavalier, Adam Hall having a little conversation on the bench. I'm sure about their uh, most recent shift as we are just over six minutes into this first period. Scoreless game between the Flyers and the Sabres. These are the dangerous games for teams like the Flyers. Dave, you alluded to it earlier. Buffalo's in 30th place. This is the one everybody looks at and goes, well, you're going to win that game. Well, Buffalo's got no pressure on them. Hey, they've got some talented guys out there. They get something going, and you're under pressure if you're the Flyers. You've got to grind it out as much of these games as, as you do the other. Shipped off the boards and back to center ice. Leno, the former Flyer, got a stick on it. Running with speed with Conacher, but it's knocked away by Hartnell. Good example elsewhere in the National Hockey League tonight, Brian. The Dallas Stars went into Florida, had a 2-0 lead, and lost the game 3-2 in regulation. Wow, countless examples of that. Nashville went out west and both beat both San Jose and the Ducks. Now a chance for Bradenshen across the line. Erhoff played him well. Now it's recovered here by Johan Larson, who was part of the Commonville trade last trade deadline back in April of... 2013. Larson now. Holding along the board by Simmons. Right up, right up. Taken away by number 17 who backhands it out to the far point. Strike has it there. Pushes it back in deep for Simmons. Simmons, Roffel, and Braden Shen. Guys talked about this in the pregame show. Roffel centering this second line with Braden Shen on the wing. Sends it out to the high side looking for Simmons. Got a stick on it. And Delorier for the Sabres hands it off now and Larson across the line gives it off to Luke Adam with a shot that's blocked between the circles up in the air and tracking it is Mason but it's knocked down by the big defenseman Nicholas Grossman and Grossman hands it off to Roffel and he'll start it back. Well the Flyers aren't giving up anything in their own zone. Buffalo's hardly had any looks at the net at all. Rosehill who had uh, one of the two goals for the Flyers yesterday and a scrap against Sean Thornton. What a goal he scored, too. Yeah, it was a good round move. Wow, he looked like a 40-goal scorer in that one. Now it comes to Hall with LeCavalier and Rosehill on this rush into the Buffalo zone. LeCavalier tried a hard backhand pass that's blocked up on the netting and out of play. In the game against Boston yesterday, the Philadelphia Flyers had a good first and a second period. Craig Berube said, though, we had a terrible third period. He said, we weren't pulling pucks off the wall the way we we're supposed to. We started running around. He said he thought the focus was too much on offense. Too many guys have gone too long without scoring any goals, so they got in a different offensive mode. Started cheating, gave up some uh, big-time chances, chance after chance, to the Boston Bruins on the rush. You cannot do that. Andrew McDonald shot a penalty coming. The goaltender, the Ewan, is down. So is a Philadelphia player, and it's going to be an right. interference call against... Ronaldo. Yeah, that was away from the play. I didn't get a good look at that one. It is definitely goaltender interference. Bottom of your screen. Ronaldo gets bumped into a little bit there. Gets backed into. Certainly enough to knock the goaltender over, no doubt about that. That's Jake McCabe that brushed him off a little bit. Ronaldo probably could have put the brakes on if he really wanted to. Players try to make that look as accidental as possible. They don't mind bumping into the goal. <laughs> Buffalo did last in scoring in the National Hockey League 28th on the power play, but they did have a power play goal in uh, Detroit. In fact, they have a power play goal in three consecutive games. Those are the smaller segments that coaches like to look at. When it comes to many of the statistics they keep track of. And Erhoff across center ice. Drops it back. Ennis into the zone now. We'll wrist it along the boards. Mason slowed it down with a goal stick. Wrist the line and moved in. It's played back to the far side. Ennis has it there. Holds it back in deep. Picked off by Tiemann. Now Tiemann tried to reverse it. Intercepted by Hudson. Hudson closing in with a shot. Mason the save. Loose puck at the side of the net. Now behind the goal. Sabres get it back out to the line. Wrist the line and slides it across for Erhoff. Now it goes to Hudson who will backhand it out to the line. Erhoff with a drive that... Hit a player out in the high slot, bounces to the near corner, Ennis tries to walk out with it, jams it to the front. And it's steered just wide of the flyer goal. Here's Ennis again. Tyler Ennis. Hands it off to Hudson. 
Back to Ennis, although I think Hopson was trying to pass that to the front of the net. Now Hopson with it again, fakes the drop pass. Hands it off for Ennis in the corner. They switch positions. Tyler Ennis waiting for an opening. Hands it off for Hobson. Four Sabres in tight as it comes off the boards and picked up by the lone man that was up high, and that was Erhoff. Now it comes to Conacher. 20 seconds left on the power play as Mason makes the stop there on Ristolainen. Hard around by the penalty-killing defenseman Braden Coburn. He got it all the way down the ice. Good zone time by Buffalo. Not a lot of looks. The best chance were both coming out of the corner. Tyler Ennis with some great moves, but the Flyers very patient in the penalty kill. Billy Leno across the line. Lost control. Rue Weedle able to hold it in momentarily. Now it's picked up by Luke Adam. Hands it off down low. They come back to Rue Weedle. Shot was blocked. Out high. Another chance here for the Sabres. It blocks over top of the net. Ronaldo, who served the penalty, has lost his stick in the scramble. Oh, D'Agostini had a great look at the net, Dave. I think the puck was rolling a little. He just blew it over the crossfire by an inch or two, but he had the right idea of where he was going. I'm sure Mason never saw it. D'Agostini with a steal, trying to dump it to the front. Claude Giroux was there to knock it away for the Flyers. Sends a far side for Boracek. Ahead now for Hartnell. Hartnell spins back. Sends a far side for Boracek, trying to get it with some speed. Weber steps into him, and now big John Scott out on the ice, number 32. Had it taken off his stick, he pokes it free. McCabe able to get it on the far side, and now it comes back to D'Agostini. He just angles it off the boards, back into the Flyers' end. Larson gets to it. Hartnell knocks him down. Scott tries to send it back to the point. Now Larson with it again. Turns it back toward Mason. He steers to the side. And Scott tries to go out to the far point, but it comes outside the zone. And Earhoff with it now for Ristolainen. Ristolainen will hammer one in around behind Mason. He got out quickly. To stop that puck, then it allowed his defense to get back and play it. Strike made the nice outlet to Michael Roffel, who plays it deep into the Buffalo zone. Hop and Roffel come together as the puck controlled by the Sabres. Larson sends it across. Air hop out the center ice for Cody Hobson, who drops it back. Now Bristol Lining. Matt Ellis, number 37, back to pick it up. Angles it off the board wide of the flyer goal. Colburn has it there. Quick, quick out the pass, and it's chipped off the wall by Roffel, and McBain got it back momentarily for Buffalo. Roffel over skates, and Cody Hudson. Hands it off now for Demkis Gergensen, who played for Ted Nolan in the Olympics for Latvia, and that puck took a strange bounce off the info, came right out in front. Well, they momentarily vacated Philadelphia net. Now Weber with a shot that goes wide. Adam Hall's going to get to it. Off the stick of Rose Hill, the center ice. Now with Cavalier with it. He'll carry into the Buffalo zone. But Cavalier hammers one here. Now right back to the net. The Ewan able to make the stop and the Sabres clear. This is Luke Shen backing up into his own zone. That was a Cavalier on the rush, missing the net on the far side. That cost him a key goal against the Boston Bruins. It's the subtle details of the game that make a difference. You come in off the wing, miss the net on the far side, goes off the end wall, off the side wall, and the other team's going in the other direction. It killed them against Boston the other day. Fortunate it didn't happen to them a moment ago when the Cavalier just missed. Now Couturier chips it deep into the Buffalo zone. McKay back to get it. Couturier steps into him. Conacher. Giveaway shot here, hit the goal post. Rebound, Reed scores! It's a line change for the Philadelphia Flyers, and Mark Streit is going to come in at the top of your screen. The puck comes off the board, and it's just sitting there on a tee for him. He hammers it off the goal post. Lewin can't recover. He's not sure if it has gone in the net behind him. But look at Strike. Just walk into that one. You could hear the clank all over the building. And then Matt Reed, who would also come off the bench, is open. We see that so many times. Players that come off the bench on a line change, and the opposing team just doesn't pick them up in time. Another chance right off the rush here is Voracek, but he couldn't get the pass from Giroux. And it's back the other way now is Larson. Gets it deep into the Flyers' zone. 21st of the season for Matt Reed. And 
the bad giveaway by Conacher, Brian, is what led to that opportunity. And it's back the other way, teaming it. Hartnell, good job to stay outside. Strike the only assist. Now John Scott pushes it ahead into the Philadelphia zone. Colbert. Leaves it to the far side. Giroux around on the right wing boards now for Wayne Simmons. Hands it off for Braden Shen. Shen across the line. Drops it back. Grossman a shot block. Braden Shen now tries to move it along. Weber up the far side for Ellis. And Brian Flynn had it chopped off his stick. Strike tried to quickly get it out of the zone. He's challenged by two Buffalo players. And Grossman able to hand it off. Michael Roffel. All the way into the Buffalo zone, and Braden Chen just stepped in offside. We will step away when we come back. We will hear from the head coach of the Flyers, Craig Berube, whose team has a 1-0 lead. You're up 1-0 in this game, but when we talked this morning, you said you wanted to see the details of the game defensively that you got away from last game. Do you like what you're seeing so far on both sides? Yeah, I do. I, we, you know, we haven't given up any odd man rushes. We've got people back. We're defending well. You know, we got the, they got the power play there, and they had some zone time. But other than that, I think we're doing a good job defensively. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Craig Berube, 17th year in the organization. His first coaching experience came back in the 3 4 season as a player coach with the Phantoms, who at that time were playing right across the parking lot at the old Spectrum. Craig Berube is... Uh, Honed his skills as a coach, paid attention as a player, as an assistant coach, and head coach in the American Hockey League, and now here with the Flyers as a shot right through. The U.S. made a save. It comes back near the Buffalo net. He doesn't have it controlled yet. Now he reaches down and covers it up. More action going on around the league. Let's go back to Liam McHugh. Dave, thanks so much. Time for a game break. You mentioned it. Stars led... Florida 2-zip, but that all came crumbling down. Florida, Sean Bergenheim, the redirect, a crushing defeat for Dallas, but they still pulled that one-point advantage over Phoenix for the final wildcard spot out West State. Yes, they do, and those teams play the last day of the season in Phoenix. <laughs> Off to the line, teaming it. The shot here goes wide. Now, Borchek with a shot. That's fought off by Lewin and cleared by Buffalo down the ice. going to be icing here as Colburn gets down there. Can you predict the Stanley Cup playoff? Challenge your friends and family or compete in public leagues for a chance to win great prizes, including tickets to the 2015 Stanley Cup Final. Fill out your bracket at NHL.com slash bracket. Dave Strader, Brian Englund, uh, Brian of Wisconsin, and I know in the other bracket a lot of people follow in college basketball. Your team <laughs> fell last night as uh, Grossman with a shot right through that is handled here by Leewen. I talked to Nathan Leewen this morning. He played his first game March 16th. He's 1-3 for the Buffalo Sabres. He said, I'm starting to get a little bit of a roll going. In other words, get, get a couple of games under my belt, get a feel. He won the game against New Jersey in a shootout. He had a big smile on his face about that. He only lost 2-1 against St. Louis. He yeah. fought his way through. He played four-plus years in the Western Junior League. Last year, he went from the East Coast League to the American League and has been in the American League this year up until now. This is his chance to show what he can do. Yeah, played in Greenville in the uh, East Coast Hockey League. And then, of course, with Rochester. He is a draft pick of the Buffalo Sabres back in 2011. Luke Adam just got a stick right across the face, too. But he just got bounced right back up. Speaking of Luke Adam now, at center ice, he'll dump it in wide of Mason. Picked up by Nick Grossman on the near side for Rose Hill. Covered though by the Sabres. Adam hands it off. Here's Larson. Wheels it back to the line. There's another broken stick and a big shot. And there's a whistle line in the defenseman has to back up without a stick now. And the puck goes along the board tip behind the Buffalo net. Yeah, I was at fourth line of the Philadelphia Flyers with Vinny LeCavalier. A little bit modified. Because Rose Hill and Ronaldo wanted on that line, but if they can get goal scoring and production a little bit from, from fourth line, Vinny LeCavalier and Ronaldo, that'll mean a lot down this stretch and possible playoff. Billy Leno drops it back for Tyler Ennis. Ennis so good at buying time and creating space. Darts around the flyer zone, now tried to hand it off there to McBain. 
Ennis nearly got it back, but the Flyers' Luke Shen plays it ahead to Raffle, right wing side for Simmons. And there's Ennis coming back to make the play defensively and clears it back into the Flyers' zone. And that is going to be icing. Mike Weber did a good job of staying up at the blue line there, like other Buffalo Sabre players. Weber is playing really banged up. He's been a, a real warrior for them. Tyler Ennis said the puck a lot. There's a look at Weber. Of course, you know, nobody ever says what the issues are. Just the fact that he's out there, though, when they have been so short-staffed. And he's played hard for them this season. McBain to Weber, who will lift it down the ice. And that will go wide of the Philadelphia net, which means another icing in the faceoff back into the Buffalo zone. Push for the playoffs Tuesday night. Brian and I will be in St. Louis. The Blues against the Capitals who are hanging on right now for their playoff lives in the East. St. Louis still in the push for top spot in the West and the President's Trophy. And how about this double header, uh, double header on Wednesday night rivalry. Detroit taking on Pittsburgh and then Anaheim and San Jose all coming up on Wednesday night rivalry here on NBCSN. Don't try to figure out who's going to play who in the playoffs yet, folks. We have no idea. It'll change minute to minute. Voracek with a shot that's blocked up out of the netting and out of play. With 2.51 remaining here in the first, Matt Reach, 21st of the year. Flyers with a 1-0 lead. So the Flyers playing one of their games in hand on the New York Rangers tonight. The team that's in front of them in the standing after tonight at Florida, at Tampa Bay, at Pittsburgh on NBC next Saturday. And then they'll finish up here against... Carolina, they likely lose the tiebreaker, though, Craig Berube's team against the Rangers. They trail the Rangers by three ROWs, which are regulation and overtime wins. You take the total wins and subtract shootout victories. And uh, that's the, been the new tiebreaker for the last couple of years in the National Hockey League. So the Flyers can make up their games in hand with wins. They could be even with the Rangers, so they would need one more point than New York over the last three games of the schedule. But as we said at the top of the show, this is a team that could have home ice in the first round, and they could be right out if they don't pick up points in these final games of the season. You always want to look ahead for the Rangers for sure, but the elephant in the room is Columbus behind them. That's right. Columbus continues to uh, dominate their game tonight. They started an hour earlier against the Islanders as this puck comes out of the zone. Columbus with a 4-0 lead in that game, but... Flyers own the tiebreaker against Columbus right now. So Columbus has to get at least a point in front of the Flyers. As Erhoff back at center ice. Sends it back into his own zone. And Bristol Linen has it there. Larson, wrist shot, blocked. Luke Shen just knocks the Buffalo forward down after he took the shot. And now Rosehill with it will hand it back. Andrew McDonald across for Luke Shen. Flyers with a 1-0 lead, Matt Reach 21st for Mark Strike. The Cavalier trying to get through, and I think he's yeah. going to draw a penalty here. You bet. Good job by the veteran. He, the self-chip we talk about all the time, Brian, that is so uh, prevalent in today's game, and he kept his feet moving. Yeah, I don't know if it's, I think it's Larson. Johan Larson, 22, is going to get the penalty for it. Yeah, because Erhoff, I think, led off enough. It was kind of a sandwich play there. He got tripped up by the stick, and yeah, that is Johan Larson headed to the penalty box. So this flyer power play that has Jake Voracek on the point. I talked to Voracek this morning. He said, I've been playing the point on the power play since I was about 12 years old. I love it. It gives me more room to work in and out. Here is Timonen, the guy on the other point. Giroud back to Timonen. Toward the net. Tip. Rebound tip. Oh. Simmons with a stop there. Viola Ewing just stretched out the left pad. Simmons one of the top power play goal producers in the National Hockey League. Only Ovechkin and Pavelski had more coming into action today. Simmons with 14 goals on the power play. Ovechkin has 22, Pavelski 15. As we're in the last minute of this first period, here's Borchek. You just mentioned him, Brian. He takes it deep into the Buffalo zone. Battling with Weber. Now Simmons digs it free. Giroux plays it around, teaming it. Back to Borchek. Teaming it straight away, Borchek. Able to knock the puck down right to his stick. Back to Timonen again. Long range shot right through, and Leeuwen able to make the save, and he holds on. Leeuwen's doing a heck of a job here. He's finding the puck from the point. The save on Simmons is outstanding. Bottom of your screen, Simmons always works that side. He is on the right side of your net, if you look at the net there. 
and he'll step out into the front. Now watch this toe save. That's about as far out as you can stretch your left leg if you're Nathan Lewin. And really nice job by Simmons under pressure getting pushed down from Weber on the backside. Still got the shot away, but doesn't end up in the twine. Wayne Simmons trying to be the modern-day Gary Dornhofer and Paul Holmgren, a couple of former uh, Philadelphia Flyer versatile forwards that were tough guys, went to the front of the net. And around the board, strike, could not keep it in. Yeah, Simmons will pay the price down low. He's a tough guy. If he gets uh, abused too much, he'll turn around and punch somebody right in the head too, or <laughs> in his own face, and he has really good hands. At the line, a couple of players collide, and uh, who's going to get the penalty here? It may go against Couturier for interference. Yeah. That's usually what happens with the uh, entry on the power play. One of the stationary players for the power play team tries to Kelly pick somebody up. 14, two minutes interference. Yeah, you try and make it as, look as accidental as possible. Couturier's job is just slowly move along the blue line. Look at 14. He, he just has his own space, and that's going to be his argument. Like, hey, I didn't move. I didn't move into him. I didn't body check him. But, you know, it's one of those calls that goes to the def defender. That was Matt Ellis, yeah. the, the, the uh, Buffalo defender, trying to move and zone in on the, on the puck. It's a, it's a difficult call, but to be honest with you, I think, I think it's the right one. It looked like Couturier was just trying to get his leg out of the way. He might have been better off just standing still, but... Well, he almost he, was, Dave. I, I think they almost took the pressure on him to get out of the way of the defenders yeah. to give him a chance to go, especially because he got knocked down completely. And that's going to do it for this first period in which the Flyers enjoy a 14-5 advantage in shots on goal, and they will start the second period with... Still four skaters a size. Stay tuned for the Lexus Intermission Report. Liam McHugh and Keith Jones in the studio. They'll talk about Columbus in control of their game. And the Penguins resting their stars as they have locked their spot as the Metro Division winner and the number two seed in the upcoming Eastern Conference playoffs. Flyers important points on the line in this push for the playoffs with a one nothing lead. The Intermission Report right after this. The NHL on NBCSN is brought to you by Lexus and their pursuit of perfection. And by Frostproof Coors Light, the game's most refreshing beer. Back in Philadelphia. Here it ended with each team having a man in the box. It'll begin that way. Couturier for the Flyers, Larson for the Sabres. The Larson penalty has uh, just 30 seconds remaining. Barring any other calls, when he comes out, Buffalo will go to work on their second power play. Right now, four skaters aside. Nearly turned over there by the Flyers as Gergensen was in on the four check. And a board check for Giroux out of his reach. Covered here by Zemkis Gergensen. And Larson step, stands up rather in the penalty box, getting ready to step out into the ice. Billy Leno across the line. Larson steps out, power play begins for Buffalo, but the Flyers able to send it all the way down the ice. Richard Erhoff with it. A little over a minute for Buffalo to work on this man advantage, down one to nothing. Kyle Rennes off his stick. Wilson did not get it by Christian Erhoff. Hands it off now for Conacher. Back out to Erhoff. Nice little play to get it back to Ristolainen with a drive and missed it on the glove side. They a lot on that shot now. Here's Erhoff. Gets the return and uh, could not keep it in. He just dumps it back into the Philadelphia zone, but Buffalo had to go back and tag up. And that leaves a lot of time for Colbert, blocked by Erhoff. And he... Corey Conacher couldn't in. get out couldn't of Couldn't get zone. out of there quickly enough, could he? Yeah, the uh, Philadelphia Flyers were very fortunate there for a moment because Grossman had a chance to get the puck out of the zone. And he didn't, just a little bit careless there. They ended up getting that shot from the point by Rissolainen. And, and did he ever smoke that thing? I wasn't sure if Mason got just a touch of it with his catching glove. But anyway, it, it didn't go in the top one. It didn't miss by much, right? Yeah. It's those little things sometimes on the clears, especially on the penalty kill. Sometimes you only get one chance to get it out. It, it just has to go out. 
Weavers, one more entry late on the power play, but the pass back to McBain went by him and all the way back into the Buffalo end of the ice. The Ewan settled it down there. Now Couturier is standing up in the Flyers penalty box. A couple of Sabres collided, and Couturier comes out. Here comes Brian Flynn now handing it off on the far side. D'Agostini is knocked away. Great Chen may have a chance to break here. Rue Weedle has the angle on him, a couple of the outside. They played ahead to center ice, and that was knocked away. Weber now plays it back into the flyer zone. You could probably hear a lot of the yelling from the Buffalo bench about when the penalty was over, et cetera, et cetera. That was all Mike Weber, who was here on the end of the bench. The very vocal guy on the bench for Buffalo. Braden Shen drops it. Colbert with a shot to cut it. Blocked by Weber. Set right through the goal mount. All the way to the far side. Picked up by Simmons. He tried to wheel it back to the front. And McCabe will start it back the other way. Jake McCabe. Able to bounce it around Simmons. Backhand shot was handled by Mason. Now the Flyers get to it. And Colbert. Puts it off on the inside for Braden Shen. And uh, that play is offside. And let's go inside the glass. Here's Brian Engblom. The Buffalo Sabres only had five shots in that first period because the Flyers did a real good job at pace and defense. Even when Buffalo had extended time inside the zone, they couldn't penetrate into the real scoring area in the middle. Look at how the Flyers just keep everything to the outside. Here's Ennis going around in circles on the outside. As soon as he tries to get in the middle, nothing happens. Attack down the middle. Everybody converges, turns it to the outside. Flyers very patient. Craig Berube not happy last game in the third period by their lack of attention to defense. Hall, first to speed, gets a shot away. Leeuwen just held his ground on the short side. Flyers trying to keep the pressure on now with the Buffalo zone. They have the 1-0 lead. Now the first period goal by Matt Reed is 21st of the year. The Cavalier trying to hold off Erhoff, trying to get it to the front. Shot was blocked by Erhoff. All the way to the near side. Straight, moves it to the corner. Now up the wall with it. Rosehill sends it in wide of the Buffalo net. Cleared by the Sabres back the other way. Hobson trying to catch up to it. He's at the end of his shift. And so he just turns back to the bench. And the Flyers stretch past the other way now. Yeah, Cody Hodgson had a little more left in his legs, or he might have had a chance at that one. Now Adam on the far side. Flynn out of his reach. Back the other way is Reed. Reed looks across far side. Quickly redirected to the front of the net. Over and all, couldn't put one directly on the goaltender. Leeuwen, now it comes back to Couturier. He hammers a shot that's blocked to the far side. Right back to the front of the net, and Leeuwen able to knock that outside. Reed to Couturier to Ronaldo. What a terrific three-way passing play, but it just kind of jammed Ronaldo when he was right on the edge of the paint. There wasn't really anywhere to go with it to make a move. A nice passing play a, on the rush here by Flyers. Now Larson taken to the board by Shen. Andrew McDonald back to get it. Four and a half gone by here in the second period. Now Reed will send it deep. You would just let it go around the there. Ty Ronaldo with a big hit. Uh, Jake McCabe as Colbert held the puck in. Now Conacher backhands it. Out to center ice. D'Agostini couldn't break with it. Now Hartnell backs up. Looks the return pass. Hands it off to Claude Giroux. Makes a move to the outside. Good stick there. The one of the Sabres just got a piece of it. He has that sixth sense about him, Dave. He just makes a move. I mean, it, it, his brain doesn't even do it. His body just takes over. And he sidesteps people at high speed. It's incredible. Offside at the flyer line. But let's go back to the Flyers' last rush and their chance. Wendy's Robocam is going to show them on the turnover here. Watch. Along the, along the wall, back into the middle of the ice, and then back down to the edge of the paint. That was the chance. It was tough for Ronaldo to control that one. It was Reed to Couturier to Ronaldo. Good idea. Didn't quite work. Sabres control now is Christian Erhoff. Sends it ahead. It's deflected by Billy Leno deep into the... Flyers zone, Mason moves it quickly for a strike. He takes a hit from Scott, who put it out in front. Picked up by Ristolainen, the shot to the front of the net. Sailed wide on the near side. Now Ennis. Wheels it off the boards for Erhoff. Rick wide, Ristolainen. 
Braden Shen comes back to make a play out of that. He is hit by Scott. And back the other way now. The Flyers on the attack. Here's Wayne Simmons up the left wing side. Takes a look over his shoulder to see who's coming late. Now Simmons out to the high slot wheels. Shot was blocked to the near board. Great Shen. Great away. For close but a shot. You had got a piece of that. Boy, Riska Line is a very aware young defenseman for Buffalo. He's only 19 years old, boys. He's stopping his 30, too. There's a shot by Roffel that's sent in wide of the Buffalo net. Oh, but did he ever have Lewin moving there? That yeah. corner was open on the short side. Now, you mentioned Riska Line. When I talked to Ted Nola before the game, and I mentioned that he was optimistic about the future of the team, he mentioned Riska Line specifically. Yeah. He likes him a lot. The Ewan will hang out of this. Six and a half gone in the second period. Flyers continue to lead 1-0. Download the NBC Sports Live Extra app to watch the game live on your phone or tablet. The NBC Sports Live Extra app on NBCSports.com slash Live Extra and NHL.com. Dave Strader along with Brian Inglom here on a Sunday night in Philadelphia. One week remaining in the regular season. As the Sabres trying to play the role of spoiler, Gergensen with a high shot that sailed up over top of the flyer net. They get it right back toward Mason. Good coverage by McDonald in front of the net there, and that shot from the point. And Weber slides it across. Quick up for Gergensen, wristing it in wide of the flyer net. McDonald hands it off far side. It's Directed by Rosehill back into the Buffalo zone. Now picked up by Weber. Backhanded far side and now McBain able to clear. Covered here by Coburn. He slides it across. Teaming it with it. He lifts it in and it's handled by the Buffalo goaltender. And he will hold it there. Andrew McDonald with some good solid defense in front of his own net. Matt Ellis has the shot from the point. Watch right in front of the net. 47 against 37. The shot's just thrown to the front. That's good stick work there. Andrew McDonald, the Philly defenseman. You have to tie a guy's stick up. You have to have body position between the offensive player and your net. But you have to have the stick tied up. Otherwise, you're going to be in trouble. Great work there. Grossman takes, takes it toward the net. Roseman all the way behind the Buffalo goal. Angles it off the boards now for strike. Sends it far side. Tap from the point. Never got anywhere close to the Buffalo net. Another chance here. Score! Mm -hmm. Six for Good puck possession by the Philadelphia Flyers and great pass from Matt Reed. Reed, number 24, comes off the wall, and Ronaldo just in motion, in the seams. Not a flat-out great scoring chance. Ruido is not quite up on him soon enough. Zach Ronaldo pulls away from his de from the uh, defending winger of the Buffalo Sabres and just one-times it high into the far corner of the net. Well, we can, well constructed there by the fly. Onside on the rush right into the zone off the faceoff following the goal. Buffalo dodges that one as they come back the other way. Ennis. Picked up now by Leno. McCabe tries to get it toward the front of the flyer net. Bouncing puck picked up here by Cole Giroux. Angled it off the board, but didn't get it at the angle he wanted. Now Billy Leno. Trying to fight off a flyer check. Sends it back in deep. Ennis from the angle. The save made by Mason. Now John Scott with it. So Reed gets his second point, as does Mark Streit. Streit assisting on both goals. Reed now with a goal and an assist. And we talked at the top of the show about guys like Couturier and LeCavalier and their lines, and maybe they need to pick up the slack a little bit for scoring if the, if the top lines are shut down. And that Couturier, Reed, and Ronaldo line is accounted for both goals. As Hudson now tries to get it deep. And it's recovered by the Flyers. Simmons pokes it ahead. Erhoff got it back and it's picked up now by Cody Hudson. Blocked by Raffle. 
Clayton Chen moves it along. It's intercepted by Erhoff, and it's pushed ahead into the fire zone. Cody Hobson hammers one here, and a right glove save by Mason. He will hold it there. What a terrific save by Mason it was, too, because that was a heck of a shot. A little pushing and shoving here. The fans get excited. It looks like the players are going to let things calm down. Cody Hodgson just ripped this shot. It looked like it was headed right inside the post, about an inch and a half, two inches off the ice. Really tough save. Look at Mason stretches out there. Right-handed catching goaltender, one of the two or three in the entire National Hockey League, and then the Flyers doing what they do well. Get in your face. That's Simmons with a little bit of a shot there. But doesn't get a penalty for it. The referee's letting them defend their turf a little. Well, the face off back in the flyer zone as we approach the halfway mark of the second period. Sabres control. Dagostini shot block. Here is Weber with it. He tried to get it to the front. Blocked by Andrew McDonald. On second effort, McDonald. Played it ahead, it was deflected though. One of the Sabres able to control. Rohan Larson. Now Andrew McDonald moves it along for Luke Shen. And Shen puts on the brake service. Larson watching him. Broken up by Conacher in the neutral zone. Recovered though by the Flyers. Backhanded by Ronaldo. Took a hit from Weber. Now McBain with Reed coming in on the forecheck. Ronaldo there as well. Conacher. Able to play it back the other way into the flyer zone. Great Coburn. Drops it back into his own zone. Luke Shen with it there. Now Couturier ahead for Ronaldo. Ronaldo back for Couturier. Back to Ronaldo. Difficult angle. He dropped it back. Penalty coming. Delayed call. Save made by Leon. And now the rebound goes wide and taken by Weber. And so we will get the penalty call. John Scott having a conversation with the tough guy for the Flyers, Rose Hill. I don't think anything's going to come of it now. From the Flyers' standpoint, they have the lead and a man advantage coming up. A couple of goals. You've had some good puck possession. you played with some good tempo. How do you get inside and get some more uh, shots and scoring chances? You know, you, the, the score goals in this league, you have to pay a certain price. And, and uh, you know, we, we had some some looks, but not enough presence for that net. we got to get some uh, some people in front. You have to pay a price to get there. Thank you, Coach. Obviously, he doesn't feel his team has paid the price so far. And right now, they're a man short with McBain in the box. Took the penalty right before we went to the break. And so... The Flyers with the man advantage for the third time in this game. Their second one didn't last long as they took a subsequent penalty, and now this puck jumps over the stick of teaming it, who gets it back for Voracek. Nine and a half remaining in the second period. Flyers with a 2-0 lead, trying to respond to Columbus's earlier 4-0 win against the Islanders, which for now puts them even with the Flyers in points. Again, the Flyers hold the tiebreaker. And Philadelphia trying to distance themselves again by two points from Columbus and get two points closer to the idle New York Rangers and still have a game in hand on New York as Daru hands it off for Hartnell. Hartnell now will drop it back. Picked up by Timonen. Hands it back off for Daru. Now Daru to Simmons. Hands it off for a shot. Great pass in play. Great save. Leon in a wide open net. And Daru hammered it wide. Now it comes back to the line for a check again. Sends it far side. Keeping it for Giroux. Now it comes to Vortek. In front, redirected up over top of the net by Simmons. In his familiar spot right in front of the opposing net as this puck is sent all the way down the ice. Boy, an intensity. Whoa! Now that was interesting. Yeah. Coming off the wall. <laughs> Mason came out and he was all alone and put it right to his own crease. Well, he wanted to get it, Brian, before it crossed the line and got to an area where he couldn't play it. But when he played it off the corner, it came right back toward the net, as you pointed out. Fortunately for him, there was nobody for the Sabres that was back there. Prior to that, though, everything but in on the power play there for the Flyers. Great intensity on their power play. I mean, there's a purpose out there. They, they are, are shooting with a purpose, making their play. They had two great looks and just couldn't bury it. Now Couturier. Heads it back to the Cavalier. Straight away. Got here by McDonald, just line of the net, sent back to the front. And hit a leg in front, uh, off the end wall there. Le Cavalier had a chance to hit a leg. Now it's taken by 
Couturier lifted it up too high, and it goes off the netting and out of play. Let's go back to the entry of the Flyers. Interesting. You try and get everybody stopped at the blue line, watch, and then the, the back pass. Try to get all the Buffalo Sabres stationary and then give it to Giroux, who has great skills in attacking with speed. Later on in the same sequence, oh, good save there. I didn't see that Ruedel actually saved that goal. I thought that Giroux had actually missed the net there, but Ruedel was the goaltender there with a terrific save. Now it's uh, angled off the board. May have hit somebody up in that Philadelphia bench. Yeah, a lot of teams use that entry into the zone on the power play, and that's the idea, is to try and get the defending team stopped at their blue line and then have a guy coming with speed, especially when you have a guy as skilled as Giroux, coming with speed and pick your way through. The, the, the problem with that and the flaw is if you turn it over, if Giroux turns it over, now everybody is stopped on your team too, and you're going the wrong way, and you're really open out now to the pass short hand. Now Ronaldo taking it wide on uh, Ennis. Ennis gets a stick on it. He's pursued by Roffel. Now here's Roffel to the front. And that hit the side of the net and a penalty coming. As against Zach Ronaldo, who was uh, mentioned by his coach Craig Berube when we were in St. Louis to do the game about six days ago and just said that this guy brings us so much energy. McBain's going to the penalty box. What a play by Michael okay. Roffel in the corner. Watch Roffel. Comes out of the corner here. Great little move. Just hits the side of the net. Ronaldo had done the, the forechecking along the wall, helped turn it over. It was Tyler Ennis who was under siege and couldn't handle the puck quickly enough, and that led to the scoring chance and then the penalty for tripping by Jamie McVay, another power play flyer. Out to the line, team it in, and a glove save. And I, I want to say that um, I've just been told that the correct pronunciation of the goaltender for Buffalo is Nathan Lewin. The NHL guide and record book phonetically said it was Lewin. But I'm told that it is Lewin, so we want to get that correct and apologize for the misunderstanding. Now it is chased down in the corner and sent back out to the line over the glove of Timonen. And Voracek drops it back in deep. Timonen has it now and starts it back the other way for Voracek. Got Hartnell, Simmons, Giroux with him, along with team in it. Here's Paul Giroux. What a play to get it up to his stick. But his centering pass intercepted by D'Agostini, and it's sent all the way back into the wire zone. And again, Mason having to be very careful that he doesn't touch that puck in an area that he is uh, not supposed to. Boy, is Jake Voracek ever active on that power play, too? He is in a real skating mode. He's been flying up the ice on the power play from that point position all game long. And that play just outside of the Buffalo line. Voracek up on the play. If Giroux doesn't have it on the attack, it's usually Voracek. Watch him attack here, and then he, he takes two Buffalo Sabres with him, gives it to Giroux, and then Giroux, because he's a right-hand shot on the right-hand side, I think fell probably on a bad angle. He tried to throw it into the opening, tried to find Hartnell, but it went into the gap and missed everybody. The Cavalier wins the draw straight back, and here is Strike with it now. Angles it back for Andrew McDonald. McDonald, under a little pressure, able to hand it off now, and Strike starts it back. 55 seconds remaining in the McBain minor penalty. Flyers with a 2 0 lead. First period goal by Reed. Second period goal by Ronaldo. Now it comes to the Cavalier, oh, where he wanted one of those one timers that we remember from earlier in his career from that spot with Tampa Bay. Now here's Strike straight away. Score! Some contact with Lewis, but the official indicating it is a good and the Flyers with a 3-0 lead. That was Luke Shen in the paint. I don't know if he deflected it on that shot from the point. After the Cavalier had gone for the fences on an attempted 400-foot home run, it goes back to the point. And Shen coming out of the corner. Good heads-up shot there by Mark Strike. Another assist for him. And Shen gets a piece of it, I think, before he makes contact. Yes, he does. A little acrobatic display there from uh, Braden Shen as he deflected that one in and then ran into the goaltender. I think a good note call there. The puck was going in the net or in the net before the contact was made. And, you know, Braden Shen 
The only way you can stop that if you're Buffalo, David, is you have to block him out before he gets there. But the concentration of all the Buffalo defenders was the shot coming from the point. They weren't looking for the outside. Uh, Ronaldo with what looked like another good hard hit, but he's going to get penalized. Delayed call! And the shot by Larson back in and wide of Mason. And it comes back out near the line. Empty that down to a right now as Lewin has gotten to the bench for the extra attacker. Ennis across the line. Now Ennis trying to get it back in deep. The delayed penalty still going in. Finally, we get a whistle. We will step away. Great Chen has given the Flyers a 3-0 lead. But they'll be shorthanded when we come back. Zach Ronaldo is in the penalty box for this charge on Jake McCabe. He doesn't slow down enough. He's got two hands on the stick, left his feet a little bit. All those things will get you a charge in penalty. As soon as he delivered the hit, he turned around, he saw the official's arm in the air, and he, he knew right away. So Buffalo with the power play for the third time tonight as Lewin settles this puck down for Erhoff. And the Sabres out of their own zone. Erhoff across the line, rink wide. Rift the line and with it. And he missed a good chance there. He put his head up, lost the puck off his stick. He had lots of room to go to the net. Now Ennis sends it out to Erhoff. Erhoff. Hard pass to the side of the net. Now it's sent back out to the line by Hodgson. Across on the far side for Ristolainen. Now for Erhoff. Ristolainen with it. Now it comes to Conacher. Swept away. Grossman up the board with it. And it goes into the Buffalo bench and out of play. Starting April 16th, the networks of NBC Universal bring you complete coverage of the 2014 NHL Stanley Cup Playoffs. Every game, every night, because it's the Cup. The 2014 Stanley Cup Playoffs presented by Geico. Buffalo the puck again. They were using the point and moving it back and forth. But again, the penetration into the middle just isn't there. Billy Leno with it. Still without a goal on the season. Hasn't scored since last March. 55 games without a goal. And out back the other way comes Reed. Reed puts on the break. Waits for some help. Drops it back. Luke Chen with a chance. And that was blocked before it got through to the Buffalo net. I think Billy Leno got a good stick there. It was a good time for Chen to move up. That was well done there by the Flyers. Now it comes to Adam. Adam tried to drop it back. It deflects to Leno. And now Leno looks across, looks to the front, hands it high slot for Luke Adam. That was blocked by Couturier. And now it's chased down by McDonald, and uh, that goes up into the bench area and out of play. Matt Reed in that last defensive play coming out of the zone. Good anticipation to, to fly the zone. And then watch him stop up top left of your screen. You'll see Luke Shen, the defenseman, coming in late. There is a gap. There's some time and room. Billy Leno comes up with a strong defensive play there to take that good scoring chance away. Matt Reed has been very sharp in this game. A couple of points for him, too. Uh, they're not going to allow this last line change, I think. Michael Roffel was going to come out. Adam Hall had gone to the bench. Hall had had an issue with his hand. I think he got slashed or got hit with the puck. He had an issue with his hand that he wanted to go back out there. The referees went, nope, too late. Rare face-off lost by Giroux. Led to a great chance by Hodson. It was rolling. Giroux had won 13 of his first 17. Now Hodson. Far side. Erhoff kept it alive. Now Ellis for Hodson. A quick move to the front. Backhand shot was blocked by Mason. A scramble at the side of the flyer net. Now Jurgensen's and Ellis. Ellis wraps it around for Erhoff. Pressured by Ronaldo, who served his penalty. Giroux will wrist it in wide of the Buffalo net. Flyers have to be concerned about some of the face-off losses they've had. In their game against Boston in the third period, they lost 13 out of 18 face-offs. Now, Boston is one of the best teams in the league, granted. But that was a clean win a moment ago for Cody Hodgson as well. Mason has it, drops it quickly, pushes it ahead. 
Flyers trying to catch the Sabres on a chance. Le Cavalier scores! What a shot by Vinny Le Cavalier. It's 4 nothing. Line changes and then the quick ups in second periods when you're a long way from your bench is the story here. I think this shot gets deflected by Weber as well. The line change by the Sabres, you'll see left side of your screen, a wholesale change. Look at the quick pass. They get Vinny LeCavalier there. Weber comes across, and the way the trajectory of it, it just looks to me that it may have gone off his stick and right up under the bar. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it did. It ramped right up the stick. That's why it was so impossible for Lewin to get a beat on. He was down, took away most of the net. It was right up under the bar. So Cavalier's 19th of the year, and uh, the goaltender Mason will get an assist on that play. Well, the Flyers had scored five goals in their previous four games coming in. The Cavalier has just given the Flyers their fourth goal of this game, and Strait looking for more, but Lewin gobbles everything up and uh, holds on with a minute and a half remaining here in the second. It's important for the Flyers to have Benny LeCavalier going. When he can play center, which is where he wants to play, he's a happier player. He's on the puck. He was playing wing for about 35 games after he came back from the back injury because his coach just said to him, look, you're not on the puck enough. Either you have to get faster and get quicker, or you're going to stay on the wing. And he stayed on the wing for a long time, but he got his chance back here at center, and it's paying off. The Flyers, Brian, with four goals, and that's without Giroux or Voracek having a a point in this game until Borchek just got the assist. Now Adam Hall off the faceoff, plays it along the board behind the Buffalo net. Delorier cleared it. McDonald throws it right back in. Ruweedle picks it up now for the Sabres. Plays it up the right wing side at the line. It is momentarily held in, but now the Sabres get it out. It's deflected right in on Mason. He'll just sweep it for McDonald. Who plays it out to center right, Sean Couturier. Nice reach to control the pass. Holds up inside the line. Ends it to the corner. Rosehill rolls it back in deep. Couturier and Ronaldo were there. Ronaldo took the Buffalo player down. And Zach Ronaldo is going back to the penalty box with 45.7 seconds remaining. The Flyers almost caught the Sabres again when their defenseman changing on a quick up play from Andrew McDonald. And then they got in the zone down deep and on the forecheck here, here comes Ronaldo. He just comes in hard with his stick down on the ice, but yeah, he, he takes Weber's feet out from, from underneath them. He is playing the puck. Oh, he also uses his leg for a little leverage and behind the knee as well too. And when a, when a player falls down that violently from behind, you're bound to get a penalty. Aesop goes between the two Buffalo point men back inside the Sabres line. Erhoff starts it back the other way. Hands it off now for Tyler Ennis. Tries to dart between a couple of flyers and he pulls it off. Then he's knocked down by Matt Reed who clears it back into the Buffalo zone. Final 25 seconds of this second period. 29-11 the shots on goal. Favoring the flyers. And Couturier will wrist it all the way down the ice. Lewin will just settle it down there, and now he'll play it up the right wing side. Ennis, with some speed, kicks it up to his stick, but it's intercepted now by Couturier. He plays it back the other way, and that's going to do it for this second period. The Flyers had one goal in the first. They added three here in the second. Coming up. On the Discover Card second intermission, Liam McHugh and Keith Jones will talk about blue collar jackets and the race for the top seed out west. A few teams involved in that one. At the end of 40 minutes, the Flyers taking care of their own business after Columbus has won their game earlier tonight. It is 4 0 Flyers. The intermission report right after this. The NHL on NBCSN is brought to you by E-Trade, are you type E? And by Verizon, the official wireless partner of the NHL. 
Back in downtown Philadelphia, the Flyers came into this game winless in four and in a goal-scoring slump. They solved that through the first 40 minutes with a 4-0 lead. Dave Strader along with our man inside the glass, Brian Engblom. And Steve Mason is getting his net looked at. Looked like maybe they were looking for a hole or something. Or Oh, yeah, it's the, the camera. The camera looks like it's perhaps come undone. So they're going to take a look at that for a moment. But Steve Mason's got 31 wins on the season. I talked to Craig Berube this morning, and I said, kind of assuming that Mason would play pretty well all the game, the rest of the game from here on in as the number one guy. And he said, well, not necessarily that guy might end up playing another game. He said, Ray Emery's actually played really well for us. Emery's only got eight wins on the season, though. He played very well the other day in the game that we did, that 0-0 tie in regulation yeah. against St. Louis, which they lost in a shootout. But it did it did surprise me a little bit. They do have back-to-back, though, Dave, don't they? One last back -back last uh, weekend of the season, uh, they're on NBC Saturday afternoon in Pittsburgh and then wrap up the season Sunday back here against Carolina. So... Be interesting to see if that Carolina game still means something to them positioning-wise or whatever. If uh, he does decide that is uh, Craig Berube to split the goaltending chores on that weekend. Buffalo starting this third period with a man advantage. You saw Zach Ronaldo in the box. Took the penalty in the last minute of the second period. Conacher hands it down low and has tried to walk it to the front. Mason just held his ground down low. Now Bristol Island able to get it to Ennis again. Ennis back to the line. Airhoff with it. Air Hop goes back to Ennis. Tyler Ennis. Which he places now with Conacher. Conacher gives him the puck. Ennis. Trying to jam it to the blue paint. Covered up very quickly there by Steve Mason. Tyler Ennis has had really pretty remarkable season when you think about it. 21 goals on the year. And for the Buffalo Sabres to have a 20 goal score the way they've gone through the season with, you know, massive trades. The longtime Sabres traded away so many different players. Uh, 43 players have played for them all season long. He's had different line mates and combinations, and he gives them a lot every night. He's had a lot of puck possession time here tonight. He's also been frustrated on many occasions because he can't get the looks that he wants at the net. Rude Leno, high slot, Agostini, good stop there by Mason, he got a piece of that. Now Billy Leno, jams it out to the point, Rude far side, McBain with a shot, and it didn't get it all the way through to the net. Now Rude again, pulls it away from Adam Hall, Luke Shen, with a hit on the Buffalo defenseman, Ronaldo out of the box, Buffalo still with pressure, Delorier tried to get it to the front of the net. And Delorier pushes it along. Michael Roffel comes up with a loose puck, and he starts it back for the Flyers. Well, Michael Roffel, very calm under pressure. Many times in this game, and in the games I've seen this year, he'll carry the puck carefully out of the zone like he just did. That's a very valuable tool to have. Now Borchek for strike. He'll turn it back now for Grossman. Borchek, Giroux, and Hartnell. The top line for Craig Berube out here now, early in this third. A chance here one time, just wide of Lewin. That was Giroux coming late on the play, nicely set up by Borchek. That one, one timer, I think the puck, I don't know that it was setting flat, so Giroux didn't get the shot that he wanted, maybe. Now strike, hammers along the boards. Far side, Simmons is there. Scott comes up on the centering uh -huh. pass, and Hartnell deflected it just wide. Boy, that fake shot had everybody fooled, especially Lewin, the goaltender. Hartnell had the wide open net and couldn't handle that slap shot pass. He kind of has a smirk on his face. Hartnell does. Comes back to the bench. Now Weber plays it on the near side. Billy Leno could not clear it. Held in by Simmons. Sends it to the far side of the Buffalo zone. Around now for Billy Leno. Now McCabe pressured. Taken back by Simmons. I slot a chance here for Braden Shen. That was blocked. And Conacher scoops back the other way. Billy Leno. Turns back down. Hands it off for Bristolainen. Now the Flyers get it back. Here was Braden Shen. On the angle. And Lewin had to make a save. Puck out on the far side. Picked up by Luke Shen. He spins away from the pressure of Conacher. Intercepted now by Ennis. Oh. 
Drew McDonald now for the Flyers. Reflected ahead by Roffel across the line. Pushed to the board by Gergensen. Now Roffel again with Hall and Rosehill. Andrew McDonald pitched down the wall, but Hotset sends it across now. D'Agostini with it. And the backhanded toward the front of the net. It's into the glove of Steve Mason. He will hold it there. Off the faceoff again, a chance for Buffalo along the wall. Look at in the middle of your screen, Matt D'Agostini. That was a terrific scoring chance, a big save by Mason. And this was a great block by Shen as McBain had great penetration. Two of the best looks that Buffalo's had. And then there's the chance for Hartnell. But it's such a hard slap shot pass. He's like taking a look at the replay right now, sitting beside me and going, oh. And then Giroux with his chance, you could see the puck was fluttering a little bit. Couldn't quite handle it. D'Agostini for Gergensen, straight on him. Back for D'Agostini, Grossman pins him to the boards. A little over four minutes gone by here in the third. Backhanded by Couturier, didn't connect. With Matt Reed, this is going to be icing. Call Star Star NHL to download NHL Game Center and get a free premium upgrade only on Verizon. Enjoy exclusives like free live NBC national games. Never be without hockey. Couturier line out there again for the Philadelphia Flyers and Keith Jones did a nice job there putting a package together of this line has been very effective for the Flyers tonight. Ruwin over the shot that ends up over top of the Philadelphia net. One of the Sabres uh, glory lost his helmet. And Ruwin out at the blue line got run into I think by Ronaldo. He had difficulty getting back to his feet. And that, because of that I think that's why we have the turmoil going on yeah. over against the boards. It was after the play. Ruweedle is Buff walking down the uh, the runway uh, under the tunnel to the Yeah, he was, in, he was in difficulty. It was right at the blue line inside the flyer zone. Looks like Zach Ronaldo came out. Of. Here's Ruweedle. There's the shot. Oh, oh there we go. Yeah. yeah. He finishes the hit. Ruweedle is in the shooting motion. But it is, it is a blow to the head for sure. He uses his, his bicep, his arm, and he leans into him. And it's principal point of contact. They will definitely take a look at that. That lunge. And you, he's already had a charging penalty for lunging, and he's gone. Penalty number 36. Have, match penalty for illegal contact. Attempt to injure. Yeah. Five minutes. That's why. It's that lunge. Even though Rue Weedle was down in the shooting position, and he's more vulnerable, all the more reason why you have to be careful when you're going out for that hit. Yeah, and, and, and see, he left there's the yeah, lunge. Yeah. yeah. There's the lunge. He left his feet, and boy, right up the side of the head there. So Ronaldo, who has played very well, has had a couple of penalties in this game, and he's liable for a suspension there for sure, too, which would be a big blow for him because of the way he's played his way into a regular in this flyer lineup and would upset their lines again but we'll see where that goes down the road it was called a five-minute match for intent to injure yeah and so the buffalo sabers down four nothing and it, it is it's definitely because of the way he lunges and you, can, you can't after the fact say well i'm sorry i hit him in the head i didn't mean to well, you, you have to make sure Throws some pressure on the Philadelphia penalty kill, but they have the cushion of a four-goal lead. Now jammed along, it's picked up by Conacher. Hands it off for Hudson. He is pressured, puck comes up the boards, Hall. Able to get it free, but the Sabres converge on the puck. They don't get it, allow it to come out, but now Raffle forces it out to center right. Knocked away again by the penalty killing Flyers. Here is Ennis. Ennis, Conacher, Hodgson up front, along with the Airhawk. And at one point, as this puck is sent back down behind Lewin, who plays it along the far side for Billy Leno. Now Airhawk into the Philadelphia zone. Backhands at far side, Luke Adams. Takes a hit from Luke Shen. And it's knocked away. Good help there by Couturier to send it down the ice. 
Flyers just winning those little battles uh, in the middle of the ice there. That was Couturier that time before it was Rafa. Just really strong on their sticks. McBain drops it back. Leno, far side, Luke Adams. Luke Jett runs into him again. Now back to McBain. Luke Adams knocked off his stick and the Flyers able to clear. A minute and a half of the five minute match penalty to Zach Ronaldo. It has gone by as Buffalo continues with this man advantage. Rally 4 0. Hall drops it back. Nice play there. Hall to team in it. He sends it all the way back down the ice. Boy, terrific positioning by the penalty killers and flyers all night long and quick support of each other. They've never isolated one guy and then another. They're always boom, boom, boom. Rohan Larson taken to the boards. Puck comes free on the far side. Giroux gets to it. And he will send it all the way down the ice as he takes a hit from Brian Flynn. He doesn't like it much either. No. He's eyeballing Flynn all the way back to the bench. Now Bristol Linen. Sends it along the boards. Off the goal stick of Mason. Recovered by the Flyers. And Grossman smartly finds an opening to send it all the way back down the ice. And now we're just about halfway through the five-minute match penalty to Ronaldo. Hudson, the rest of the line. Strike plays it along the far side. Erhoff, and good stick work there by Reed. And Bristol Lining got over there for the Sabres before the players could do anything shorthanded. Ennis across the line. Drops it back to the line now for Erhoff. Erhoff with a shot, team direction, score! Cody Hodgson. Great redirection by Hodgson, makes it 4-1, to one, and there's still 2-0-3 remaining in the match penalty to Ronaldo. Well, Buffalo finally gets in the zone under control. Good job there by Tyler Ennis to take the zone. And then watch Hodgson in the middle of the ice. That's pretty much impossible for Mason. Mason's standing up, trying to look past the screen in front of him about a waist-high shot that gets knocked down immediately to the ice, and there's no way for Mason to drop down. But finally, an entry with some control. Credit Tyler Ennis for that, taking it about 10 feet inside the zone, then getting it back to Erhoff for him to move in the middle and take that shot. Power play continues for the Sabres, who have to go back deep in their own zone and start it up the ice. Delorier to McCain. Now Gergensen couldn't control it, backhanded by Hall. That's Delorier with a preconceived idea of where he wanted to pass, but he gives it to McVean, and McVean's already covered. There's no way you're going to take the zone under control like that. You've got to make a smarter pass if you're Delorier. Broken up by Raffle. Good to have a chance to break here. Short hand, it comes in, and he missed it trying to hit the top corner on the glove side. Erhoff and Ennis with the two assists on the goal by Cody Hodgson. Luke Adam tried to feed it to a teammate. It was... Cut off by Coburn, played around, and now recovered by Luke Adam. Adam with a shot here and fired it wide on the stick side. D'Agostini now for Buffalo. Angle off the boards for McBain. Now Delorier hands it off. Good stick there by Raffle, and it's forced all the way back into the Buffalo zone with 55 seconds remaining in the match penalty to Ronaldo that's being served by Jay Rosehill. Erhoff drops it for Hobson. Hobson across the line. Now played around by Conacher. Ennis had it for a moment, lost it. And it's cleared by Reed out the center right. He just avoided a pretty hard check attempt there. Yeah, he Conacher. didn't like it. He got no. a pretty good slash on Corey Conacher after that. Now wrist aligning. 20 seconds remaining in this five-minute Buffalo power play that has produced one goal. Now put back wrist alignment across for Erhoff, one-timer, blocked in front before Mason had to make a save. And it's lobbed all the way back down, and Rose Hill is up in the Philadelphia penalty box with just five seconds remaining. And he steps out, teams are back at full strength, Mason has it in the glove, and he decides to hold it. Cody Hodgson with a redirection on the power play has put Buffalo on the board, but the Flyers still in command by three. There's the goal scorer for the Buffalo Sabres on the redirect on the power play. The shot by 
Erhoff, as I mentioned, Ennis also had an assist. Buffalo has shown some tenacity, as I mentioned, in recent games. This shot gets all the way through to Mason. They were down 3-0 in Detroit, battled back to get there within a goal, and were able to pull the goaltender and create some anxious moments at the Joe Louis Arena. They had a lot more time to come back in that game. They were down 3-0 in the first period than they'll have in this game as they're down three with just over half a period remaining here. They've had some of their best chances off the faceoffs. But uh, otherwise, like on the rush, I think they have to stop trying to make plays into the middle. They just haven't been able to do it. They should be shooting from everywhere and just have the offside guys going to the net, paying the plays as their coach talked about in the second period. Buffalo trying to keep the pressure on in the offensive zone. That's McCabe, the defenseman, way down on Hartnell. Now the puck comes free. Voracek sends it ahead. Giroux across the line. Puts on the brakes. Drops it off for Voracek. Ellis steps into him. Well, angled off the board. One-handed out to the line for Strike. He slides it across. Back it comes to Strike. Good puck movement here by the Flyers and a shot right through deflected wide of Lewin. Good positioning there by Weber against Hartnell right in front of the net. Borchek tried to cut to the front, but it's knocked away. And Ellis will get it to center ice and dump it back into the Flyers zone. Colbert hands it off for Braden Shen. Shen with a shot into the glove of Lewin and he will hold it there. We will step away just past the halfway mark of the third period. Flyers with a 4-1 lead over Buffalo. Benito Cavalier and the Flyers with a 4-1 lead. 9.06 remaining here in the third. Sticking to their defensive posture is what Craig Rube will be looking for. Braden Shen with a shot here off a face-off win by the Cavalier. And Buffalo only had one shot on that five-minute power play. It was the goal. Oh, it was terrific by, by the fly. Yeah, they did a great job. And un unstoppable deflection there. Now rolling puck in the Buffalo zone. Simmons gets to it. Simmons hands it off. High slot. Braden Shen wheels. Fires it to the net. LeCavalier there. Backhand shot. Lewin the save. And he hangs on. Vinny LeCavalier with a nice little spin around move to evade the traffic in front. Lewin does a terrific job of just staying with this and finding a way to get it done. The traffic in front. Look at 40 in orange. Getting body position there. Here comes the shot. He knows he can't go to the forehand. The experience of Vinny LeCavalier spinning around, using that long reach. He has Erhoff taken care of as Erhoff dives on the short side, but he can't get rid of Lewin. Jurgensen hands it off now for Weber. Weber, rink wide off the carom. Hansen gets a stick on it. Mason, he's going to handle it. He does. He backhands it off the end board. Hansen stays with it now for D'Agostini. Try to jam it out to the far point, intercepted by Raffle. And now Matt Reed angled off the puck by McCabe. Now Weber back the other way. He pass for D'Agostini, too far in front, set back the other way. And this is going to be icing against the Flyers. Let's go inside the glass with Brian Inglom. The penalty killing has been outstanding in this game today for sure, but Michael Roffel has been one of the guys who's done the great job. Look at him on this play. Just never gives up on it, stays on it, stays on it, right to the very end. Then he turns the puck over here, and that's the shorthanded chance that he had. Buffalo Sabres all going the wrong way. He just happened to miss the net. Erhoff kicks it to Delorier. Now it's picked up by Luke Adam. He rolls it around behind Mason. Delorier backhands it. Larson out to the line. Crystal line and angles it off the boards. Eight down by Delorier. Out to Erhoff. Looking for a shooting lane. Doesn't have one. He'll try anyway. It was knocked out in front. And now Reed just plays it back into the Buffalo zone with seven and a half remaining in the third, Brian. Yeah, you know what? The Buffalo defense is doing a better job of getting those shots through. I think that one did get through to Mason. It went off a leg and was deflected. But that's the kind of stuff Buffalo's got to do if they have any chance of getting back. Just shoot them everywhere. Get some traffic. There. Now Cobra across the line, and that's blocked up on the netting and out of play. 
Wednesday night rivalry doubleheader on NBCSN. Jimmy Howard of the Red Wings will look to hold off Sidney Crosby and the Penguins in what could be a preview of a first-round matchup in the East. And then the Sharks face off with the Ducks. Push for the playoffs continues. Coverage Wednesday begins at 6.30 Eastern here on NBCSN. John Scott and Jay Rosehill with a few words and sort of a brush by each other. Two tough customers. Now Le Cavalier and uh, Flynn on this faceoff. Up to the board. Sabres got two at first. Colbert, though, for the Flyers. Comes down the wall to play it back behind the Buffalo net. Up the near side, Rosehill battling with Ellis. Now the puck comes free and it bounces off of Scott and back into the Flyers zone. Colbert finds Rosehill center ice. Plays it into the Buffalo zone. Weber takes a hit, plays it up the near side, picked up by Ellis. Hustling over was Le Cavalier to take it away. Le Cavalier with a goal and an assist here tonight. What a move there by McDonald coming out of the corner. Now Ennis tries to make something happen. Four orange jerseys go around him. And no place to go. And Voracek back on the attack the other way with Giroux. Ristolainen took him to the boards in front. Giroux, nice pass across. Oh, and Lewin with a great read. He dove out, executed the poke check, and prevented the Flyers from ever getting a shot on net, and now icing is called. Oh, the big line for the Philadelphia Flyers, really moving it around. It was Lewin and McCabe who both had their stick in there. Just when you thought that Giroux was going to take the shot, he passes one more time. Oh, it's the handle of the stick. I thought maybe McCabe, number 29, had done it. But watch that. Oh, yeah, the blocker and the handle. Really well done. I mean, Lewin has really battled hard in the net here for Buffalo. Lewin played 32 games this season down in Rochester. Had a very respectable 17-11-2 record. Safe for seven, percentage over 92. He was very laid back this morning, Dave, when I had a little conversation with him. He just loving this opportunity, wasn't uptight, didn't have that thousand-yard stare thing. Yeah, exactly. Friendly, you know, just wanted to play. Voracek trying to get it out to the front. Taken away by Ennis. He starts it back. Will hammer one from center ice in wide of Mason. Billy Leno has it. Mention Leno, the former flyer. Remember the, the great uh, playoff he had with the Flyers in 2010 when they went to the finals, eventually losing to the Blackhawks with 19 playoff games that spring. Billy Leno had 21 points, 7 goals, 14 assists. And on the strength of that playoff in the next season, he earned a six-year contract at $4.5 million a year as far as the cap hit. He still has three more years left on that after this. And he can't score a goal to save his life anymore. Now it's cleared out far side, Braden Shen. Erhoff hustling after him. Shen with a shot, he scores! Terrific breakout with speed by the Philadelphia Flyers. But what a shot by Brayden Shen, who goes top shelf. Buffalo pressing up, gets caught in the middle of the ice. Erhoff not aware that Shen is on the outside with some straight ahead speed. You watch him. He's just going to lean into this. Look at the shaft of the stick there. And he just has a beat on that top shelf on the short side. <laughs> that is perfection right up under the crossbar inside the goal post over the shoulder of the goaltender. Second of the night, 20th of the season for Braden Shen. And boy, I would say the, the Flyers have broken out of their scoring slump. Yeah. They, for one night anyway. And, and, and they need the five-on-five five goals. You know, we, we alluded to so many times this year, their power play directly in, their power play is terrific. Sometimes you start to look for it to get you out of slumps. But what you need is those five-on-five five goals, which they've gotten tonight from third and fourth liners and spread it around. Larson now. Pass across to Laurier to the middle for Bristol line and the defenseman who had jumped up on the play. Now Rosa walks it. Larson with a shot. He missed it on the glove side of Mason. And it bounces all the way out to center right. Simmons gets the only assist on uh, Shen's second of the night. Great Shen. Well, the Flyers have answered what Columbus did earlier tonight. And Delorier 
And of course, Columbus would love to catch Philadelphia, but their primary focus is get in. Well, they separated themselves from the teams behind them. In the New Jersey. Now played ahead by Rappel, out of the reach of Wade Shep, and he'll chase it down, trying to jam it to the front. It deflects on uh, the far side and bounces out to center right. Columbus also moving to within one of Detroit for the top wild card spot. This puck is cleared back now into the Flyers' end. Grossman back to get it. He passed for Raffle. Angles it off the board. Braden Shen's going to get to it. Erhoff came by, got a piece of it, tried to jam it out of the zone. And hit Conacher. Now Conacher trying to pull away, and he does. Hands it off for Ennis, right wing side, Jamie McBain, hammers one in on Mason, but the play was offside as Conacher getting into it with one of the Flyers, but they quickly separate. Perfect shot by Braden Shen, his second of the night, 20th of the season, has given the Flyers a 5-1 lead. For 40 years, the Verizon IndyCar Series has been burning rubber in Long Beach. It's all horsepower and palm trees. The Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach next Sunday at 4 Eastern here on NBCSN. Luke Shen on the bench there was getting a little bit of attention too on one of his hands. He's getting nicked up along the way. Find a way to keep in the lineup. Board three trying to get it by McBain. And now it's Couturier sending it across. Weber backs up for the Sabres. Hands it off now for Ennis. Out of the 240 remaining in this one. And played back into the Buffalo bench and out of play. Zach Ronaldo got tossed out of the game for a match penalty. And here's been his night prior to that. Really nice goal. Had a lot of good things going playing on that Couturier line with Reed. Then he got a, a charging penalty for leaving his feet. And then this is the one that he got tossed for. See, again, he's lunging and he's leaving his feet again. That's what's going to get him in trouble. There he is being tossed out of the game. He's done a lot of really good things. They need him in the lineup in a lot of ways. He does good things. He stirs things up. But he's got to stop making hits like that. Now Bergens is pressured by Le Cavalier. Forced a turnover. Lewin was run into there by Rosehill. And a delayed call coming against the Philadelphia Flyers for the contact with the Sabre goaltender. And, and Lewin is a little shaken up. Back to the front, score! On the delayed penalty, Buffalo has scored. And there had been a collision behind the net. A couple of players went down, but with 2-12 remaining in the third, Buffalo has made it 5-2. Yeah, that's Mike Weber going right into the paint area after that collision behind the net. He knew it was a delayed penalty. The defenseman knows he has nothing to lose by getting up on the play. And there's the elbow to the side of the head by Rosehill going through the crease. That's why Lewin was shaken up. And then good work down low by the Sabres, and they turned it over. Rosehill, the one who banged into the goaltender, number 37, just isn't paying attention to Mike Weber coming in from the point, has his back turned to him. And then a quick jam play, Mike Weber, Scores the second goal for the Sabres. And his first of the season. Not a big smile, of course, because this team's still down by three. And only a couple of minutes remaining in this one. Now Braden Shen drops it back to his brother Luke, who plays it up the far boards. It doesn't come out. Luke Adam tries to get it to the front, intercepted by Reed. And it's set back. Out to center ice. Ristolainen got a stick out of Braden Shen. Colliding there with Delorier. And now Matt Reed starts it back. Raffle. Braden Shen. Knocked aside by Lewin. Now a pass to the front. Braden Shen with a redirect and Lewin the save. The second, third, and fourth lines have been so effective for the Flyers, it's actually taken a lot of pressure off of the Peru line, the number one line. And because of that, you haven't seen nearly as much ice time for them, Dave, as you normally do. Uh-oh. Oh, well, Hartnell tried to shoot this one into the zone, and it came right up into the face of Christian Erhoff. He's going right off the ice right away. 
and hit him in the ear. I can see his ear bleeding yeah. as he bolts off and down the hallway. John Scott goes over there and talks to Hartnell, but it's not intentional. He's just trying to get it to the net. Oh, Erhoff is coming across to try and take him out. That one hit him right in the ear. Yeah, I could see as he just uh, flung his gloves off and went right to the locker room there. Unfortunate. Hope he's going to be all right in the long run. Hudson and D'Agostini, incidentally, with the assist on the Weber goal. We're down to a minute 10 remaining. Now Flynn and Couturier. Flynn won the draw at the line. Andrew McDonald held it in. Now here is Braden Shen. Hits it back out. High slot, Hartnell, Luke Shen. Redirects for McDonald and shot sent wide of Lewin. McBain able to play it out to center right. John Scott bursting it deep into the Philadelphia zone. Well, the Flyers who started the night with 87 points will go to 89. They'll be two behind the idle New York Rangers. And still two ahead of the Blue Jackets who went from 85 to 87 points. Now Hartnell. Bristol line it, plays it along, Flyers get a stick on it, final 10 seconds. Now McCabe is the crowd that still remains here at Wells Fargo comes to their feet. Mason gave up one goal, two goals, excuse me, on 19 shots, didn't have a chance on either one. And uh, Braden Shen with two goals to lead the way for the Flyers who finally broke out of their goal scoring slump. Flyers win it by a final of 5-2 to two for Brian Inglom and the rest of our crew here at Wells Fargo Center. I'm Dave Strader. Thanks for joining us. But more coverage coming your way as we send it to Lee McHugh in our studio for NHL Overtime presented by Bud Light. Liam? Thanks, Dave. We will have much more on the Flyers' postseason push. Plus, out of contention, but not out of energy. It was a day for the spoilers in the NHL. The Florida Panthers made life miserable for Dallas would have derailed the Stars' playoff hopes. Meanwhile, last place Oilers are playing angry One, two, and they're giving the four, Anaheim five. Ducks all they can handle. We're down to the final week of the regular season. NHL Overtime presented by Bud Light is next.